Hello viewers, I am Nilo Firzergam from Center for Management Studies, Jamia Millah Islamia, welcomes you again to a fresh new episode on mattresses. This episode explains the meaning of mattresses and discusses various types of mattresses. It also discusses the rule of operations on mattresses and law of matrix algebra. Let's come to the definition of matrices first. So what is a matrix? A matrix it is a system of m n numbers arranged in the form of an ordered set of m rows and n columns such that each row consisting of an ordered set of n numbers is called an m by n matrix to be read as m by n matrix. In journal a matrix is denoted by capital letters such as capital A, capital B, capital C, etc. And the numbers forming a matrix are called its elements. And they are denoted by small letters like A, B, C, etc. The matrix A of ordered M by N can be written as A equals to where A i j stands for an element of a matrix which is in its ith row at jth position. For example, the matrix has two rows and three columns and hence it is 2 by 3 matrix. That is the order of this matrix is 2 by 3. Similarly, this is a 2 by 2 matrix that is a square matrix of order 2. Now let A be a matrix where A equals to small a i j where i is 1, 2, 3 and j is 1, 2, 3 again. We are supposed to write the values of A22, A31 and A12. So the answer for this is as we can see clearly here a22 is the element which is present in the second row and the second column and that is 4 while A31 is the element in the third row and first column and it is minus 5 and the element A12 is equal to 4 since it is in the first row and in the second column. So that brings us to discuss the types of matrices now. So let's define some special cut kinds of matrices. The first one comes here is row matrix. A matrix having only one row is called a row matrix or a row vector. Thus a matrix of the order 1 by n is called a row matrix. An example of a row matrix can be you can write a matrix just in a row and the elements can be present over here are 6, 2, 4, minus 3. This is an example of 1 by 4 row matrix. Now a column matrix, a column matrix is a matrix having only one column and it's called a column matrix or a column vector. Thus a matrix of order m by 1 is called as a column matrix. Example is this, it is a 4 by 1 column matrix. Now what is a square matrix? Square matrix are m by n matrix is said to be a square matrix of order n. If its m equals to all of its n. So this is in our square matrix of rows and columns are equal over here. For example, Now that brings us to the definition of null or zero matrix. So let's see what is a null matrix. A matrix of any order, rectangular or square, whose all elements are zero is called as a null matrix or a zero matrix and it is generally denoted by capital O. For example,
Now let's see what is a diagonal matrix. A square matrix in which every non-diagonal element is zero and have non-zero elements in the principal diagonal is called as a diagonal matrix. For example, These diagonal matrices may also be expressed as just in a row matrix you can denote uh, you can put the elements as 1 minus 5 and in a row matrix with one row and three columns you can put the elements like 5 4 and minus 7. So this is how a diagonal matrix can also be represented. Now let's come to the scalar matrix. A scalar matrix it's a diagonal matrix having all the diagonal elements equal is called as a scalar matrix. For example, now let's see what is a unit matrix or we can also call it as identity matrix. A diagonal matrix having each diagonal element equal to unity is called a unit matrix or an identity matrix. Thus, a unit matrix is also a scalar matrix. A unit matrix of order n is denoted by capital I to the base n or simply by just writing capital I. For example, Now let's see what is upper triangular matrix. A square matrix having all the elements below the principal diagonal as zero is called an upper triangular matrix. For example, Now let's come to lower triangular matrix. A square matrix having all the elements above principal diagonal as zero is called as a lower triangular matrix. For example, Now let's come to finally to sub matrix. Now what is a sub matrix? A matrix which is obtained by deleting one or more rows or one or more columns or both of a given matrix is called as a sub matrix of the given matrix. For example, Now that's bring us now to discuss on the next topic that is rules of operation of, on matrices. So there are four rules of operation on matrices. So let's discuss them one by one. The first one here is equality of matrices. Two or more matrices are said to be equal if they are of the same order first of all and the corresponding elements are equal. In other words, two matrices say A equals to a small a i j and b equals to small b i j are said to be equal only when they can be written as a equals to b if they are of the same order and if each element of a equals to each element of b that is small a i j equals to small b i j for every values of i and j. For example,
Here both A and B are of the same order and the order is 2 by 3. And therefore we see that A11 equals to 1 which is equal to B11. Similarly we can see over here A23 which is equal to 6 is also equal to the element B23 in the next matrix. Similarly, A13 in the first matrix equals to 2, which is equal to B13 in the second matrix, and so on. So, thus the two matrices are equal, that is, A equals to B. Now, if So, next operation on matrices is scalar multiplication of matrix. The multiplication of matrix A by any scalar quantity or any scalar constant say K is defined to be a matrix Ka whose each element is K times that of the corresponding elements of A. In other words, if A equals to small a i j b n m by n matrix and K is any scalar quantity then multiplication of the matrix by scalar quantity k is given as k capital A which equals to k getting multiplied by each element of the matrix A that is k getting multiplied by small a i j. For example, Addition of two matrices is the next operation on matrices. Now let's see how addition of two matrices is possible. Addition can be performed on two or more matrices if they are of the same order. That is, if they have the same number of rows and columns. Let us consider two matrices A and B of the same order. Then the sum of A and B written as A plus B is the matrix obtained by adding the corresponding elements of A and B. For example, Then C and D are not of the same order. Therefore, C plus D is not defined here. Now similarly is the case with subtraction of two matrices. Subtraction of two matrices is possible only when the matrices are of the same order. Like for example, if A be any matrix, then minus A is nothing but this is minus 1 getting multiplied by A. So the matrix minus A is called as negative of A. Now, if A and B be the two matrices of the same order, then A minus B can be obtained by adding the negative of B to A. That is, A minus B is written as A plus negative of B, that is minus B. For example,
So finally, it comes to the last operation of, on matrices that is multiplication of two matrices. Now this, this is quite different from addition and subtraction. The product of AB of two matrices A and B is defined only if the number of columns in A is equal to the number of rows in B. If the order of A is M by N and the order of B is N by P, then the product AB will be of the order M by P. Now to get the ijth element of the product AB, the elements of ith row of A are to be multiplied by the corresponding elements of jth column of B and then their sum is taken. For example, Here it may be noted that AB is defined only because the pre-factor matrix A have three columns and the post-factor matrix B have three rows. That is, the number of columns in A is equal to the number of rows in B. However, on the other hand, the predict BA is not defined here since matrix B have two columns while matrix A have only one row. So, the row by column multiplication provide us with the necessary rule to find the product of two matrices. The rule is to multiply the first element in the first row of the first matrix with the first element in the first column of the second matrix. The second element in the first row of the first matrix with the second element in the first column of the second matrix and so on. These products are then added together to give the first element of the first row and first column of the product matrix. Next, we multiply the elements of the first row of the first matrix with the corresponding elements of the second column of the second matrix and obtain the second element of the first row of the product matrix and so on. It must be observed that for the above rule to work, number of columns in the first matrix must always be equal to the number of rows in the second matrix. Thus, A and B are said to be conformable for the predict AB. That is, the predict AB is defined when the number of columns in A equals to the number of rows in B. For example, Since A is a 2 by 3 matrix and B is a 3 by 2 matrix, the product AB is defined and it is a 2 by 2 matrix. Therefore, AB equals to
Now that brings us to the next topic here that is laws of matrix algebra. Now for this we need to discuss some of the properties of matrix addition. So let's see that there are three matrices A, B and C be three matrices of the same order. Then the first condition, the first property here will be defined as A plus B will be equal to B plus A. So that is nothing but commutative law. That brings us to the second property which says that A plus the sum of B plus C equals to the sum of A plus B plus C and that is called as associative law we know. Now the third property is A plus 0 that is equal always equal to 0 plus A and that is always equal to A that is called as additive identity law that is any matrix getting added to a null matrix is nothing but null matrix getting added to A and then finally the result is the matrix A. Now the fourth property over here is A plus the negative of A is always equal to negative of A plus A and which is always equal to a null matrix 0. So this is also an additive identity law. Now that brings us to the fifth property which says that when a scalar quantity K is getting multiplied by the sum of A plus B we get the product of KA plus KB. So where here K is the scalar quantity over here. Now that brings us to the final property here, the last one. A plus C is always equal to B plus C, which if this is the condition, then it gives us that A is equal to B. Now let's see some of the properties of matrix multiplication. Now here again let us assume A, B, C be three matrices of order M by N, N by P and P by Q respectively. Then here the first property says that A getting multiplied by the product of B, C is equal to the product of A, B getting multiplied to C. So this is again same as the associative law. The second property here is says A getting multiplied by the sum of B plus C is nothing but it is the sum of the two products AB plus AC. So again the other one over here is A plus B that is the sum of A plus B getting multiplied by C is nothing but the, the sum of the two products AC and BC. So these two are called are defined on the distributive law. Now the third property here is if A be a square matrix and I be a unit matrix of the same order then A getting multiplied by the identity matrix I is equal to I getting multiplied by the, I, by the matrix A and which is equal to the matrix it, itself that is A and this is called as the multiplicative identity. So the fourth property here says that if A is an M by N matrix and O is N by M null matrix then A into O is an M by M null matrix and O into A is an N by N null matrix. If M is equal to N then A into O equals to O into A which is ultimately equals to O where O is N by N null matrix we know. Now let's see the fifth property here. It says that if the product of AB is equal to O which is a null matrix where A and B are the two matrices conformable for the product AB then in general A is not equal to O or B equals, equals to O or A is equal to O and B is not equal to O then only the product of AB will be equal to O.
let's come us to the sixth property which says that the product of the matrices is not in journal commutative that is if two matrices a and b are conformable for the product a b and b a then in journal a b will not be equal to b a So that's bring us to the end of today's episode. So today we have learnt the meaning of matrix and the rules of operation on matrices. We have also learnt to identify various types of matrices and the properties of matrix addition, matrix subtraction and mul matrix multiplication. So that is all for today. We see you again with a new episode on matrices and determinants. Till then have a nice time. Bye.